So just to stress, this is how to remove the part that you see in the video description. Uh, this car is being completely disassembled, so I'm showing you guys how to take things apart. Typically, reinstalling the part is just the same process backwards. If there's any sort of differences, I will be sure to let you know in this video. <laughs> loosen and remove the upper intercooler piping. On this particular vehicle, the pipe on the left is different from factory, but the removal process is the same. Using a flathead screwdriver or the appropriate size socket, loosen up all clamps associated with the particular pipe you are removing. Please note that for this example, we have the upper radiator support removed, so we can show you particular things on the vehicle. If you have the upper radiator support still on, just move the hoses out of the way best you can, unless you feel like removing the intercooler. We have a video up that explains how to do that as well. cooler pipe going to the throttle body first we need to disconnect all the vacuum lines going to the diverter valve using pliers remove the hose as shown try not to lose the clamp as I did unplug the wire associated with the map sensor Using a 10 millimeter ratchet, remove the mounting bolt for the throttle body side intercooler pipe. Using a flathead screwdriver or the appropriate size socket, loosen the clamp on the throttle body. We have the upper radiator support removed so you can see this better. If you do this on your vehicle with the upper radiator support, that would be in the way. Use a flathead screwdriver to pop the retainer out that holds the map sensor wire in place. Remove the source line from the top of your diverter valve. Using a twisting motion, twist the upper pipe back and forward until it comes off of the throttle body. Remove the two bolts holding the boost control solenoid to the intercooler pipe. There's also a supply hose coming off of the intercooler pipe that needs to be removed as well. Control solenoid and diverter valve hose out of the way, remove the two nuts holding the intercooler pipe onto the turbocharger. Remove the 10 millimeter nut holding the intercooler hard pipe onto the oxygen sensor bracket. Lift the intercooler pipe out of the way and off the vehicle. Disconnect the turbo coolant line. Keep in mind that coolant can spill out of this, so it is a good idea to pinch this hose off if there is still coolant in your system. Disconnect and remove the PCV hose. Please ignore the fact that the intake manifold is not on this vehicle. We shot this at the same time as another video. Remove all four of the ignition coil packs.
After unplugging the oxygen sensor, remove the oxygen sensor wire harness bracket. Using a pair of needle nose pliers, unclip the main harness running across the valve cover so that it can be moved out of the way. Remove the valve cover heat shield bolts. These two right here are very difficult to remove and are very common issue. Uh, they tend to strip out, so be very careful while removing them. Remove the seven valve cover bolts that are being pointed out. There is one in the middle that I skipped over. The one in the back right corner is extremely difficult to get to and you will want a special wrench to get that. It's called a box wrench. They're available at any local auto parts store. Using a flathead screwdriver, 
pop the valve cover free of this seal. Unclip the one last harness connector. Once you've done this, the valve cover is ready to be removed. Hi, you made it through a whole video. I appreciate that. You should go check out our other videos. You should also go check out our website, thefastreligion.com. We got like sweatshirts and t-shirts and stuff.